Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I am swatching Crabs is Bugs by Bees Knee Slacker. Uh, in order to conform with my nail rules, I'm swatching my most recent purchase before moving on to other manicures. A happy byproduct of this is that my spreadsheet is as accurate as possible because I don't have to guess what it looks like on the nail. I'll have actually swatched it. This polish is a taupey green jelly with a rainbow pigment. It is a fantastic contrast of grungy base with a fun rainbow. This is almost like pastel swamp. Mostly gray with some green and the tiniest amount of brown. It's somewhere between a sage and an oyster color. I would love for more of these to exist from Bees Knees because I think they would make some amazing base colors. I suppose it'll depend on how this polish did. Interestingly, I have already swatched Black Swan by Cirque on this channel, so I do have a point of comparison. Just like Black Swan, this one shows some of the rainbow pigment indoors and in the LED lights, but it doesn't show the full range of colors. But at least you get a preview of what it might look like in the sun. I think you can see some red, some orange, some yellow, and just a hint of blue. And where the rainbow isn't showing, it substitutes a silver line. That's what I was seeing indoors and in the shade. But it's not terribly vibrant here. In my experience with this pigment, it just looks best in full sun. The LED lights are giving the base a slightly more brown cast, but we are also only in the first coat. You'll see when we get to the full hand shots that the green is subtle but present. Overall, I decided this was a gray polish. The green and brown tones are not strong enough to categorize it as either of those. The elephant in the room is the bubbly collection from Cirque. Um, their marketing was straight up misleading. Their photos were, in my opinion, edited. I do want to make very clear, I am not accusing Bees Knees of that. I didn't see any marketing photos, videos that made me think anything nefarious was occurring. But I did want to take the opportunity just to discuss what editing might look like regarding this pigment. In my experience, I have never seen this pigment look like a single rainbow across the nail. I am not an expert in all things rainbow magnetic pigment, but I do own six of them now, one of which I have already swatched on the channel. In my experience, when you look at this pigment, it's almost like a fully circular rainbow, with purple as the tightest middle circle and red on the outside. For instance, it looks like the cross-section of a jawbreaker if the color combination of the candy happened to be the rainbow spectrum. Because that concentric circle is then stretched across a rectangular nail with a bit of a curve, it becomes a double rainbow that's mirrored. This means that the purples are close together in the center, and as you go outward, the same colors get farther apart, so that the last one, the red, is the farthest apart. If this sounds like gibberish, do not worry. We're getting to the full hand shot in the sun. It will make sense. I can't definitively say that seeing a single rainbow effect in media is impossible, but I have never managed to replicate that look. So if you see a single rainbow in marketing, I would personally inquire how they managed it because seeing that would make me feel very skeptical that that piece of media was real. If the marketing around this pigment seems like a real bugbear for me, it kind of is because I feel like this is a really beautiful pigment that has gotten ruined for a lot of people and I don't think it deserves that. I'm going to say about this pigment what I say about just about any pigment. You will find an audience for just about any polish. Misleading your customers is just a bad idea. Uh, and again, to be clear, I do not think Bees Knees has misled anyone. Specifically, I went back to look at some of the marketing and where I could find some was on a Hypnotic Polishes website because those photos are still available. And sure enough, you can see the double effect. It's there. I will leave a link to Hypnotic Polish in my description, and I would point you specifically to the final photo. In it, 
if there happens to be sunshine, and I would ask you to look at the ring finger, and I could clearly see red on both sides of the central silver line where the camera was not picking up any of the spectrum. So I could see the double effect. If my memory is serving, I think you could also see the yellow mirrored on both sides, but I do feel like I'm getting a bit in the weeds. But I will also say that if you use a style other than cat eye, it will also look a little bit different. I've been using cat eye because I like that look. I am using the Bees Knees Magnetic Wand that I bought a couple of years ago. I use exactly the same process on my other nails that you see me using for my thumb where the magnet goes underneath my finger. And here we are finally in the sun and you can see what I mean by it looking like concentric circles of color stretched across a rectangle. I can clearly see the red on the outside. The transition through orange is pretty quick, but it is there. The yellow is pretty obvious. The green is the most subtle, in my opinion, but it is there if you pause. The blue, highly visible, and in the center is the purple. And in this case, it has taken on a bit of a magenta tone. It's almost a bit pinkish. In terms of the base color, we're getting mostly a taupey gray with a bit of green and just the slightest hint of that brown from the taupe. I have not edited the color of my footage because I don't know how. I did look to see if there were color correction tools in my software and they are present, but I haven't experimented with them yet. You're seeing what my camera captured and I thought it was accurate to what I saw in person. I have found that with each base color, one of the segments of the rainbow becomes more obvious and some become less. With this polish, the green seems to be the shy bit, but with Black Swan, it was the red and the orange weren't as obvious. And here, where I feel like the red, the yellow, and the blue are the most vibrant, in Black Swan, that was the blue and the purple. And also, in contradiction to what we're seeing here, where the purple looks quite pinkish. On Black Swan, it looked quite violet. But I would say that the rainbows are more muted here. We're back to having more of the inside look under the LEDs, where some of the spectrum is visible and some isn't. And the base looks a little more sagey. I'm sorry that my shade footage isn't great. Usually I have a couple of takes of outdoor shots to choose from, but I didn't notice a massive mosquito on my pinky finger in one of them. So I had exactly one take to choose from. Um, I suspect most of you have my reaction to a giant mosquito close up, which was, ew. Uh, most often the first clip I do involves my fingers moving wildly. So that's usually the one I discard. This is almost universal, so a second try is almost always warranted. And finally, we're inside again. You can see how the base, again, I think has lost a little of that greenish tone again. We're sort of back to a gray with a hint of green and brown. And we have also lost a lot of that spectral flair, as expected. The rainbow isn't gone, but it's not as easily discerned. Hopefully my defense of rainbow pigment isn't overboard and this hasn't felt like a 15 minute lecture on why you should like it actually. I just feel like some people's first exposure to it was misleading and unfortunate and I like this pigment. So here we are. And thank you for watching today. I appreciate your endurance. Please enjoy a clip of my chipmunk realizing her left cheek is already full. This reminds me of looking for my glasses only to realize I'm already wearing them.